Okay, everyone, I just wanted to do a quick update. I know I haven't done a video in quite a while here. just been really busy. Um, but I wanted to show you guys some cool stuff. I haven't done a lot to the printer since the last video, but I did do a couple new things. I was having trouble with the bed. The bed was having issues staying level. Um, so I put new rods on here. These rods, I hadn't changed out to the new rods yet. I had the X carriage is the new rods. I had the Z carriage rods replaced, but I had never replaced the Y rods simply because I had them pretty straight and they were working at the time. So I figured why go to all the, tr all the trouble to replace them, you know, until they're actually causing me an issue. So since I was having problems getting the bed level and I knew the rods weren't perfectly straight, I just went ahead and swapped them out because I had the rod already. I just had to cut it to the right length and put them in here. But, um, Another thing I'm, I was trying to do is I was trying to print a part that I'm working on in the protopasta carbon fiber filament, and the part itself is pretty big. It, it needed the entire 205 millimeters of the glass size, and a lot of people use those little clips. I don't have one right now, but they use clips to hold the glass in place on the heated bed, and the clips were getting in my way, so once I took the clips off and tried to move them around, I couldn't get it to work. So. I needed a way to attach the glass to the heated bed without using clips so that I would have the maximum bounds and also sometimes when the nozzle goes to move onto the print bed if your clip's in the wrong spot it'll hit it and that causes problems because it jacks up your nozzle when it runs over the clip um, or it throws the coordinates off for the whole setup if it manages to, to make one of the belts slip or something like that so anyway or it can move the glass but So yeah, I was going to use these little sticky pads they use on processor chips. I forget what they call them. It's some kind of thermal adhesive pads. Anyway, it took forever then for them to ship, so I went looking for another option, and I found the perfect option. If you guys want to hook down your glass plate to your heated bed and not have any issues with the heat later on, uh, this is the perfect stuff here, the Perm Permatex Red RTV Gasket Sealer. It's basically a high-temp silicone but it's a thermally conductive silicone, so it's not quite the same as regular silicone in the fact that it, it allows heat to transfer through it better than a normal silicone would. So I looked, I finally found that after doing a little research and people said it was permanent. It's a permanent attachment, so keep in mind that if you do this, your glass is never going to be removed from this aluminum plate unless you break it. So you're probably going to have to use a razor blade or some kind of a tool to, to either break the glass or cut it off, but it's more or less a permanent attachment, which I actually want it. I don't care that the glass is permanently attached. If I ever have to get it off for some reason, I'm just going to break it and replace it. You know, it only costs five bucks for a piece of glass this size. So, anyway, I just put a little airsoft BB size ball on the corner of each corner of the glass, and then you just carefully center it, press it down real good, uh, apply pressure above them, and actually smash them out until the glass is almost touching the aluminum plate because the closer the glass is to the plate the better your heat is going to transfer. And so far that works really well. Um, it's permanently attached. You cannot get the glass off of the aluminum. Uh, I've tried lifting it and I had a part, the last part that I printed with the carbon fiber filament, it was actually stuck really well so when I went to tear it off I found out if the glass would come off or not and it, it does not come off. It's permanently attached so that's actually a good thing in my case. So anyway, the one the one other problem I had um, after attaching this plate, or actually the reason I was trying to attach the plate with a with a glue type of a deal, is for some reason even though the printer's on something that's more or less perfectly flat and the rods are perfectly straight, you know, within reason, for some reason I couldn't I couldn't get the the entire print surface flat from corner to corner, you know, at every corner I couldn't get those all of those distances to be perfectly flat without actually flexing the piece of glass. So the glass itself is flat, but for some reason the geometry of the printer or the frame or something, something's a hair off. So every time I would get this corner and this corner and this corner right, this corner would be high, even though the glass is flat. So in order to get the glass, in order to get the print bed actually a flat surface for the nozzle, I had to actually twist or flex the piece of glass. So basically these two corners are higher than these two. So these two corners here are low, these two are high, so I needed a way to attach the glass in such a way that I could tighten down these two corners and actually flex the piece of glass and at the same time have it mounted. 
So the Permatex works really well for that. It allows you to uh, When I replace the rods, when I replace the Y rods here, I also replace the under the print carriage here, the actual Y carriage. This got switched out. It used to be a piece of acrylic plastic that came with the kit, but I switched it out for an aluminum, I think it's called a Mark II uh, aluminum bed. The only issue I had was the spacing between the Y rods here is non-standard for a Prusa I3. So when I went to put the bearing mounts on that I printed, I'll show you guys one of those real quick here. This is one of the bearing mounts, and they give you they give you a link for Thingiverse files when you purchase this on eBay or Amazon. They give you a link for these to download them from Thingiverse and print them up. But when I printed these up and went to attach them under there, I went to put it on the rails and it was a good, I want to say 10 to 15 millimeters off, so there was no way it was anywhere close to mounting. So I had to remark where the hole should have been, uh, the correct spacing, you know, use a center punch, drill them out with a drill bit, and then attach them in the correct places. So a little bit of legwork there, re-drilling the, the holes for the bearing mounts. But other than that, I, I like this aluminum undercarriage because some people complain that the heat, when you're using the heated bed, can affect acrylic and make it warp, which then throws off how flat your print bed is. I've never noticed any warping. In fact, I purposely heated up the bed, I'd say one or two times, to about 70 Celsius, and once it got up there and was stabilized, I rechecked the, the nozzle clearance on the glass, and I never noticed any difference. It was always flat, um, but I just went ahead and changed it out because I, I knew that I was going to have to flex this piece of glass and also the piece of, piece of aluminum on top here, and in order to do that, you know, you need something down here that can has a little bit of rigidity because when you go to bend this top piece, you're essentially using the bottom piece to bend it. So I wanted something a little stiffer to give me a, a good anchor to flex the top of it. Even though it's only flexed, you know, a 64th of an inch still needs a little bit of tension. So anyway, um, I didn't want this bottom piece bending and causing the bearings to bind up, so I went for the aluminum bed. And so far, the only thing I noticed is it's a little bit more noisy because the aluminum acts like a kind of like a speaker. You know, the resonance goes through the metal, but uh, it's not super noticeable. It's just a little bit of very noise you notice. But the one thing that's good about this aluminum uh, Y carriage that I've noticed is the heat, the residual heat comes down off of the bottom of the chipboard, the PCB board, and it warms up this aluminum plate. Not hot, but it just gets it warm. And having this plate down here actually warm it helps the top here keep a more consistent temperature. I've noticed that once you print something, you know, you wait one or two minutes, pop your part off, and let's say you want to print another part, and your bed still is at 50 degrees or 45 degrees Celsius, I've noticed it heats up back to 70 much quicker having residual heat in the bottom plate. So they kind of, they keep each other more balanced as far as temperature goes. So that's kind of a nice thing. Uh, so I'm going to show you the part real quick here. Here is the part I printed. As you can see, it's pretty much the size of the print bed. I put it down here real quick so you can see how big it is. It's pretty damn close to the full size of the bed, especially because there's this little tab on the back that sticks off, so it took up most 98% of the pr print bed. Okay, I did have some issues with the adhesion on the first, first layer when it was laying it down on the print bed. It didn't want to stick to the glass, and I've heard people use, say to use Windex, some people use vinegar. I tried acetone and alcohol separately. I could not get the filament to adhere well enough to put the first layer down. It would keep it would keep coming loose from the bed and making a big mess. So eventually I went to the washable glue stick method, which seemed to work fine. Put a light layer on both directions and it stuck so well that I had trouble popping it off the bed. I actually had to use a razor blade in all the corners to get it off the bed. But um I finally did manage to get it off the bed, but yeah, if you're having issues with the protopasta carbon fiber sticking to your heated bed, even if it's perfectly clean, just put a little glue stick on there. Some people use Elmer's white glue, and they dilute it with water and spread that with a sponge or a paper towel or something, but I found, I wanted something quick and easy, so I slapped this on there and started printing because I've been working on it for like an hour trying to get the stuff to stick. But other than that, the, I really like the filament. I printed small parts in it, and I didn't have an issue with it adhering. But I think on something big like this, there's a lot of holes in the part. So when the nozzle would transfer, you know, from this perimeter all the way over here to this perimeter to lay it down on the glass, it just did, it didn't stick well enough when it was, you know, starting to cool down from that travel move. Because you got to remember, I have I have a direct fan cooling the nozzle, 
so the, the very tip of the nozzle where it's coming out starts cooling even though the nozzle itself inside is the correct temperature so when you do a long travel move it's starting to cool down and it doesn't want to stick as well especially when it stops and all of a sudden it starts moving again it doesn't have time to really adhere unless it's you know something tacky so regular PLA I never had an issue but this this filament's different obviously it's got carbon fibers in the PLA um, but overall I'm really happy with the filament you can see I didn't I purposely didn't clean it up I didn't clean it up yet because I wanted you to be able to see any flaws that might have happened because of the filament itself. In some of these countersinks, you can see right here on this one, you can see a little string going across the corner there, a couple little loose ones in here going across. And I think that's just because, once again, when the nozzle will travel from point A over here to point B and start doing a circle really fast, the filament doesn't actually stick to itself that well when it first starts moving. In other words, if it, if it transfers over here and just starts going left and right, it, it's not that bad, but when it tries to do a circle or something, it, it doesn't stick right away. So I was running my nozzle at 228. Some people, people said between 210 and 230 was a good range. I found that warmer worked a little bit better. But I'm thinking if you're printing the, the protoposta carbon fiber, you might want to make sure that your cooling fan it's not running at full speed. I don't have any way to run it at a lower speed. And I, at 228 degrees, you can't really turn it off. I can unplug it up here and just turn it off completely. But then the problem is your nozzle starts overheating the block up here because there's nothing cooling it. So I'm thinking in the future here of thinking of going up in here on the on the two little wires to the fan. I'm going to put a little uh, trim pot or basically an adjustable resistor. They should be a couple dollars at an electronics store, and that will allow me to turn a knob, a little tiny dial, and change how fast the fan is running. So if I'm printing a, a, a filament such as this carbon fiber that doesn't stick real well, I'll be able to turn the fan down to a very low speed, and that way it won't, it won't cool the filament so fast. The filament will have a time to stay in its wet form and stick a little better before it starts cooling, because as the plastic cools, obviously the, the adhesion drops, even with PLA, but PLA is super sticky, normal PLA is super tacky, it's a very wet uh, plastic when it's wet, so you don't have any issues with the fan blowing on it, in fact it needs it, but with something like this, the carbon fiber PLA, you need, a, you need a lower airflow so it has time to adhere, so I'm looking to put a little thermostat on here, or not a thermostat, but a little resistor to slow down the airflow later, but that'll be something adjustable, so if you're printing PLA, you can just turn it up. If you're printing something like the carbon fiber, or in the case of ABS, you could turn the fan completely off because you don't want any airflow with ABS. But anyway, so yeah, so the part came out pretty clean except for the holes. Um, it's very lightweight. That wasn't really what I was after, but I was after something that was extremely stiff because this part has a lot of other parts bolted to it that are going to take a little bit of stress, um, and I didn't want anything moving and flexing. So this plate honestly feels like a chunk of aluminum as far as the stiffness. You can see, I, I don't know if you can see in the, in the video, but I'm putting a lot of force on the plate and you can't really see it move hardly at all. It moves maybe a 32nd of an inch on the, on the edges, but overall, it's a very stiff plate. This is only 15% infill. Um, the infill uh, hexagons are roughly the size of these quarter 20 holes, so basically inside here there's a little quarter inch hexagon infills. That's about how big they are. There's three uh, layers, top and bottom. So there's a top and bottom of three layers in the the infill or the top and bottom infill they call it. So yeah, considering it's pretty much hollow inside, it's a very strong, very stiff part, which is what I wanted. So it came out really nice. I'm very happy with the protoplastic carbon fiber filament. Like I said, the only thing you need is some kind of PVA water-based glue to get it to adhere to the bed. So anyway, that's pretty much it. Um, just wanted to show you guys that new filament, show you guys the new wire rods, the new wire carriage, and most of all, how to get rid of your clips and use the RTV silicone to attach your glass. So, thanks for watching. Hopefully, I will have an update in the near future. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do a video showing that machine when it's finished, but I may decide to show it once it's all assembled or mostly assembled. Um, I've also been printing some gears um, for the machine. This is regular PLA because the gears don't need to be super stiff or super strong or anything. In fact, they need to be a little bit 
uh, a little bit of lubricity in the plastic. So PLA is somewhat like nylon in that it has a little bit of natural uh, lubricity to the plastic itself. It, it slips and, and is very low friction. So I've been able to print the gears out of PLA and regular PLA is surprisingly strong. There's no way you can bend these teeth. So this is not a high high stress application. It's just a low stress repeatable action that I need. So these gears made out of PLA are going to work perfectly, but it turned out very nicely. Um, overall, I'm pretty happy with the PLA gears, but I might show you guys when you get it all finished. Here's another gear. Um, different color PLA, but turned out pretty clean. This is before the print bed was updated, but print quality hasn't really changed. It just I'm able to print bigger parts now, so here's another small part I printed for the machine out of the carbon fiber, protoplastic carbon fiber. And I actually was able to print, um, I printed quarter 20 threads right into this hole. So you can take a quarter 20 bolt and run it right into here without ever tapping it. The threads are actually printed into the part. So it turned out really nice actually.